Hey everyone, welcome back. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. So Vice President Kamala Harris, according to some of the most recent polls, which we are going to be going over in just a minute, does have a very small lead on Donald Trump. Of course, their first debate is going to be coming up on September 10th. That could perhaps play a huge impact on how the results in November go. But right now, Kamala Harris is starting to release a part of her economic plan. And a part of that would include $6,000 direct checks to some Americans, $3,600 up to those amounts to other Americans. We're gonna be covering who would be eligible to receive those checks in today's video. But before we go ahead and dive into it, if you would like to receive up to $200 in free stock or $200 in free cash, in a pinned comment below, I will be leaving a link to Robinhood. All you have to do is once you click on that link, it's just sign up for a free account and then simply link your bank account. You do not even have to make an opening deposit. At that point in time, Robinhood will be sending you one free stock worth all the way up to $200. And if you'd rather just have the cash, all you have to do is once you receive the free stock, it's just sell for what it's worth and then transfer the cash value right back to your bank account. Okay, so diving right into our lead story of today's video, and of course, once again, Vice President Kamala Harris has recently surpassed Trump in some polls out there. Of course, it's really going to come down to a few swing states, so we're talking like Nevada, Arizona, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Georgia, whoever is able to win the majority of those states. Specifically, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is going to be a huge state, and there are a lot of different experts out there saying that whoever wins Pennsylvania is more than likely going to be the next president of the United States. We're going to be covering some recent polling here, and as far as the general election goes, we see numerous polls. We have CBS News, Harris by Three, Rasmussen Reports. Of course, it's the best one for Trump, with Trump up by four in that one, but then we have ABC News, Harris up by four. Emerson, Harris up by four. Morning Consult, Harris up by three. So there's a lot of blue there, and these polls are really, really favorable towards Harris. And you might come out and say, well, maybe they're biased because CBS, ABC, and all these different uh, you know, polling companies could be biased towards the Democrats. But then if we look back at polling where it was Trump versus Biden, Trump was winning the majority of these polls. Even the polls with CNN, even the polls with ABC, Trump was winning. But now these same polls have Kamala Harris winning. So this really isn't the best news for Trump. And then we look at some of the battleground states like Pennsylvania, for example. On average, Trump does lead Pennsylvania by 0 0.1 points. Rasmussen reports has Trump by one. Emerson has Trump by one. Quinnipiac has Harris by three, New York Times has Harris by four, and Trafalgar Group has Trump by two. So Pennsylvania is going to be a very close race. And once again, whoever wins Pennsylvania, whoever wins Georgia, Nevada, Arizona, Michigan, Wisconsin, whoever can win the majority of those battleground states where they could really flip towards Harris or they could flip towards Trump, is going to be the next president of the United States. And if we want to look at presidential election voting, Bets. If we look at these different websites like Pet, Bet 365, Bet MGM, Sports Interaction, Bet Victor, Kamala Harris is the slight favorite. People are putting more of their money on Kamala Harris defeating Donald Trump than, than they are putting their money on Donald Trump defeating Kamala Harris, which again is a swift contrast, whereas before people were putting their money on Donald Trump to win when it was Joe Biden going to be the Democratic candidate. But ever since Kamala Harris has overtaken Joe Biden, now people believe that Kamala Harris is going to defeat Donald Trump. But let's go ahead and get to our main point of today's video. What if Kamala Harris does become the next president of the United States? When are we going to hear what she plans on doing? Well, we've actually had around three and a half years so far, not as her being the uh, president of the United States, but being the second closest to that, which would be the vice president of the United States. And right now, she is releasing a part of her economic plan. Why she wasn't pushing for these things to be taking place during her first three and a half years, well, that's up to you to tell. You could say, well, she wasn't the president. It wasn't her to say. You could say maybe she was, and maybe we just, we, maybe we just weren't hearing about it exactly. But we're going to go over one of the new plans that she's pushing for. One of the things that's coming out, and that is $6,000 checks, a credit of up to $6,000 for families 
with newborns. This is according to an article here right from CNBC. So they say that Vice President Kamala Harris on Friday unveiled an economic plan, including an expanded child tax credit worth up to $6,000 in total tax relief for families with newborn children. The Democratic presidential nominee's plan aims to restore the higher child tax credits enacted via the American Rescue Plan in 2021, which provided a maximum credit of up to $3,600 per child, according to a fact sheet from the campaign. The 2021 credit was up to $3,000 or $3,600, depending on the child's age and family's income. Harris's proposed tax break would increase for middle to lower income families for one year after a child is born. So they said, quote, we will provide $6,000 in tax relief to families during the first year of a child's life. That is what Harris said during the policy speech in Raleigh, North Carolina. So first off, leave your thoughts and comments below. Are you in favor of such payments going out? Are you in favor of these things increasing? Obviously, uh, having children, no matter where you live, is getting pricier and pricier, whether it comes down to health care, food, uh, you know, just having, perhaps taking time off of work and everything like that. So a lot of people be in favor, especially the enhanced checks, these $6,000 during the first year of life. Now, the article goes on to say that the plan comes less than one week after Senator J.D. Vance of Ohio, former President Donald Trump's GOP running mate, floated a $5,000 child tax credit, and a Trump campaign official told CNBC that Trump will consider a significant expansion of the child tax credit that applies to American families. Now, Trump, whenever he was president back in 2017, he actually doubled the child tax credit. Before he came into office, it was only $1,000. After becoming president, he pushed Congress to pass a bill that lifted that amount up to $2,000. So when he was president, he did something about that. Now Kamala Harris wants to boost that up to $6,000 for the first year and up to $3,600 after the first year. Now, as far as future child tax credit expiration goes, uh, without action from Congress, the maximum child tax credit will drop from $2,000 to $1,000 once Trump's 2017 tax cuts expire after 2025. That was just what I was talking about. And the American Rescue Plan temporarily increased the maximum child tax credit from $2,000 to either $3,000 or $3,600, depending on the child's age. Families received up to half via monthly payments for 2021, and the child poverty rate fell to a historic low of 5.2% in 2021, largely due to the credits expansion, according to a Columbia University analysis. And expanding the child tax credit to $3,000 or $3,600 could cost an estimated $1.1 trillion over a decade, according to the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget. Meanwhile, the expansion to $6,000 for newborns could cost $100 billion. So once again, leave your thoughts and comments below. Would you be on board with the expanded child tax credit? Is this something you could see happening? Well, interestingly enough, this seems like to be seems something uh, that could possibly be bipartisan because actually over the past few years, we've had some other Republicans come out, some Senate Republicans. We've had Marco Rubio. He is a senator in Florida. And then we had Mitt Romney. He's also a senator. He's been pushing for increased child tax credit payments. Now, where Republicans and Democrats differ on this issue is that Republicans believe that you need to be earning a certain amount of income, that you need to be working in order to receive these payments, whereas Democrats believe that even the poorest of families should also be receiving these credits. So someone, for example, that maybe earns like $100,000 per year is already paying you know, thousands of dollars of taxes into the federal government, so then they're just paying less taxes by getting that money back, whereas if someone is making like right around the poverty line, more than likely they're not really paying any taxes after all their deductions, so therefore they're kind of taking more from the federal government than what they're paying in. But Democrats are saying like, hey, these are the people that really need these payments the most. So that's really where their hang up is. But of course, there is a good chance they could end up working something out. It's just going to come down to those differences. Are they going to work something out? And also Republicans are looking at Kamala Harris and being like, once again, you've had three and a half years as the vice president to push these things to get done. Trump, of course, came out with the no tax on tips and then Kamala Harris kind of copied him 
And once again, she's had three and a half years to implement some of these policies. So why not do it now? Why are you saying vote for me and then I'll do it? Why aren't you just doing it now? You still have like another few months before the November elections. If you really want to prove that you're serious about these issues and these policies, why not push Congress and be out there pushing Congress to get these things done? Prove that it's not just political. Those are just my thoughts anyways. But once again, leave your thoughts in comments below. Would definitely love to read them. But that's all we have for today's video. Certainly hope that you enjoyed and found value out of it. And I will see you in the next one.